this library, but this is a nice library, y'all. I, I walked in and I was like, this is the library? This is a fancy library y'all have going on. So I'm excited to be here with you this evening just to share a few updates of what's happening at the State Democratic Party and actually listen to you, get your feedback, get some questions answered that you might have and see what advice, tips, how you can dig in because this party is only as good as we make it. This party belongs to all of us. First, when I ran as chairwoman of the Democratic Party, um, I raised by my grandparents over in Smith Station, and my grandma taught me, if you stay ready, you'll be ready. Well, one of the things that I decided to do, instead of saying that we're going to start our field program earlier, we're going to go out and start talking to voters in August this year instead of November, or in the summer this year, what if we just don't stop? So I committed to a year-round field program, and that's exactly what we're doing. We launched Organizing Corps 2020. We are one of seven states across the country that has an investment from the DNC to have organizing fellows on the ground that are, they either have to be from Georgia or in school in Georgia to participate in the program. So these are Georgia bred organizers on the ground going door to door. Right now they're doing commit to vote cards and they're doing voter registration in some key areas. And we have another round coming in the fall. So we're gonna continue to spread them out across the state to make sure that we're getting our word out and our democratic values out across the state. The other thing that I committed to doing was increasing communications. And if you're on the executive committee, um, Leader Smyre, you probably get tired of the emails back and forth. But um, I want to make sure that people understand that we are running an open and transparent party, and this party belongs to you. And so if there is ever an email today, I feel like I've been going back and forth on the same issue all day. But I want to get people to a place where they feel comfortable, because you don't dig in and do the work unless you feel like that is your party. And I can't do it by myself. I'm a volunteer, y'all. I have a little three-year-old son who is not with me tonight, but I was in Rockdale County last night, and he was with me, Carter. And he sat there, he was like, Mommy? Am I going to go to another hotel and listen to you talk? Okay, well, I'll listen. And then he wanted the microphone. And when I bring him with me to events, it reminds me of why we all do this work, because elections are about the future. Absolutely. And my Carter case, at the tender age of three, he is the future of this state, and it's up to us to make sure that he has a bright and thriving future. And I feel like we do that by uplifting our democratic values and getting more Democrats elected across the state. So that's why I do this. That's why I volunteer my time. That's why I trek across the state. Um, my husband, I don't know what happened to him. He's a library <laughs> fanatic, but he was with me. We drove up together. He must be like trying to get a library card and check out a few books. But, um, but we trek across the state because the Democratic Party of Georgia is truly my family. Um, I moved to Atlanta, I went to Talladega College, moved to Atlanta right after college and didn't know a soul. And to, un to know that a little girl who grew up in a house in Smith Station with no indoor plumbing and no running water could be the chairwoman of the state Democratic Party and a state senator, um, I owe it all to the people who have wrapped their arms around me. And I intend to do the same thing with so many other people across the state. Amen. The other thing we committed to doing was making sure that we brought more people into the fold. Mm -hmm. The way that we do that, we can't grow our party just by talking to the people in this room. I'm grateful that y'all are here in this room because it takes the party stalwarts who've been doing the work forever to keep the train moving. But we have to grow our party. And younger generations don't see themselves as Republicans or Democrats. Mm -hmm. They care about issues. And they need to know that the Democratic Party is uplifting their issues that they care about. And so that's why we are committed to bringing more people into the party by being very vocal about the issues that the Democratic Party stands for. Just last night in Rockdale County, where's Justin? Justin there's Justin. Justin is our organizing director at the party. Justin um, had some commit to vote cards, and there were some issues listed on the commit to vote card. And I got a lot of questions in the Q&A, and people wanted to know, well, where is this issue, and where is this issue? And the commit to vote cards, so when y'all see them, don't attack me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not everything that the Democratic Party cares about. Our party platform is on our website, and the national platform is on the national website. But the issues that were listed here, people were raising their hand, and they wanted to know, well, what about climate change? What about criminal justice? And all of those things matter to the Democratic Party, and that's how we grow our party. That's how we get people in who don't identify with one party or another, by making sure that they see their party, their values being uplifted and their issues being uplifted within our party structure. 
So if you if there is something that you feel like we should be focused more on, shoot me an email. I um, that little polka dot phone. I love polka dots. It matches my dress today. <laughs> that little phone is with me all the time, probably more than it should be. And I respond to. I'm not good at answering the phone, but I respond to your emails and I respond to your text messages because I want to make sure that I am really getting the feedback so that we can continue to grow our party. The other thing that we need to talk about is. Um, raise your hand if you have siblings. Mm-hmm. Most people, a sister or a brother. Mm-hmm. Most people. What about a cousin? Mm-hmm. Okay. We all got all some now. form of family mm-hmm. somewhere. Have y'all always gotten along on every issue? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so family. I have a sister who's three years younger than me, and y'all, we we are like oil and vinegar. We butt heads all the time. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't care about her. And that we're not working for the same goals and ideals in our life of uplifting our family and staying together and making sure that we are making sure we can promote the best lives for our children. And that's what we have in the Democratic Party. Y'all, we're not going to always agree. I promise to always listen to you. I can't promise that I'm always going to agree with you, just like our candidates. We have, well, the numbers fluctuating. One candidate dropped out yesterday, yesterday. and we wouldn't announce today. Oh, yeah. We're back at 24. <laughs> but we have yes. 24 candidates running for president of the United States of America on the Democratic ticket. 24. So I've heard that a lot, that there's too many. But I see it in a different light. Because i got to find the silver lining in this, or else they're all going to drive you crazy. Right. <laughs> so out of these 24 candidates, there is something that speaks to you about one of them. You don't have to love anybody at this point. Um, Leslie's back. I'll use my husband as the example. Y'all, I dated a few men before Leslie and I got married. I went on lots of dates, had fun, but none of them really spoke to me, and they weren't the person that I was supposed to marry, and I didn't marry. But nine years ago, I married Leslie, and that's like, Leslie was my general election candidate. <laughs> yes. You don't have to love all 24, yes. 25, even if we grow Walk and get more. Right you don't have to love them all right now mm-hmm. because we're just dating. We have, we have options. Get to know them. Find out what matters, what are the issues that matter to you most, Mm -hmm. and listen to those candidates and listen to how you can connect with them and use that to grow your party. Because right now is our opportunity to grow. If we only had one candidate, then only the people that are in love with, just use me, with Nakima are going to (laughs) come into the door. But I want, I need more than just the people that are in love with Nakima. I need the people who are connected to the candidate that none of y'all have ever heard of. I met a guy who is a mayor of a small town in Florida, and he is running for president of the United States. What a world we live in. You can wake up any day and decide you want to be president of the United States of America. He didn't make the debate stage, so we probably still don't know him. But 20 people did make the debate stage. And so we're going to continue to hear about that. You're going to hear some things on social media. You're going to, even me, like, I, sometimes I'm like, okay, put the phone down. No more Facebook, no more Twitter for you because, like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? And I act like they can hear me and they really can't. And, but there are issues that I'm really, really passionate about. Mm-hmm. And when I hear one of the Democratic candidates that are either doing something totally opposite of that, then sometimes I feel the need to... Um, use my voice and my privilege to make sure that I'm speaking out mm-hmm. so that I'm speaking out on those uh, on behalf of those most marginalized. I don't take for granted that I am sitting in a position of power. I don't take for granted that out of these 25 presidential candidates, I've heard from at least 20 of them personally. Mm-hmm. I don't take for granted that I am leading a state party in a time where we are in transformational times. Absolutely. Yeah. We are Absolutely. sitting on the cusp of doing something great in Georgia. Yes. Yes. In 2018, we came so close. Yes, so yes close. we did. Yes, we did. Stay <laughs> Stay but we're not, and we're not going to start over from scratch. We're right. going to keep building That's right. from where we left off in 2018. We know that there are a lot of things that happen with voting machines, with some votes. Being, I don't know if Sarah Ricks Amico has been down to talk about mm-hmm. the lost votes in the lieutenant she governor's race. Um, I'm yeah, sure you've does. heard everything around um, Stacey Abrams and some of the voter suppression down. tactics. And 
That's why the Democratic Party of Georgia, we are also the very first party in the entire country to have a full-time voter protection director on staff. Amen. And we're keeping her on staff. Absolutely. Because if we can't look someone in the eye when we tell them that their vote counts and not mean it, then we have a problem. And so we are committing the resources to make sure that we are continuing to do voter protection year round and get people educated on, especially with these new machines coming, because I don't know, um, people are going to be unfamiliar with them. Yes. So we have to make sure that people understand um, what, how to use the new machines. And if the state isn't going to do it, then I see that as our job as the Democratic Party. Yep. The other thing that we need to remember is that um, we have a big U.S. Senate race. <laughs> um, and you, you guys all know that because right here, Teresa Thomason, your hometown mayor, um, was first out the gate to announce. And she is running, and we're going to need to make sure that we make sure that Washington understands, that the rest of the country understands, that this Senate race right here in Georgia is just as important as the one up in Maine, is just as important as the one over in Alabama. I know a lot of people went over to help Doug Jones. I was there helping Doug Jones get elected. We don't need y'all here knocking on doors, y'all. So we're going to email and text our friends in Alabama and tell them to go and knock on their own door so that we can go up and down the highway here in Georgia to make sure that we're knocking on doors because we have an opportunity to win. And I'm committed to doing that, but I'm going to need your help. I need you to commit to digging in and making this your party. We're all volunteers here, and the party is only what you make it. So I... Um, I know that part of that excitement is when we get ready to go to Wisconsin for the Democratic National Convention, where we actually nominate one of those 20-ish candidates <laughs> that we have running for president. And I have had the pleasure of working with your own Dominic Perkins here. Right. Dominic! He is the chair of our statewide affirmative action committee. And he has led the process for our delegate selection plan, and I don't envy him. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Publicly, thank you. Um, it was not a small feat to gather people. Um, there were appointees from every nook and cranny of the state, and we appointed people that look like the state of Georgia because that's who we are as a party. Look around this room. We look like the state of Georgia. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Let me and look we need to make sure that in around. everything that we're doing, we're continuing to elevate that so that everybody sees that they have a place in our party. What Dominic did was um, we passed the most diverse and inclusive delegate selection plan that our state has ever seen. We also um, upheld another commitment that I had as I was running for chair, and that is making sure that people who want to participate in the party um, in a leadership way don't have to use their own resources. I was a congressional district chair over the 13th congressional district. At the time, there were seven counties in the 13th congressional district, and I was tasked with putting on the delegate selection process for the 2008 convention. Everybody and their grandma wanted to be a delegate in 2008. <laughs> and I had to host trainings in, throughout the district. I had to host um, the election process to get our delegates selected. And y'all, I was a teacher in Fulton County Schools, and I was like, who's supposed to pay for this? And it was me. I was supposed to pay for it. But we've made that change now, and we have a process that we, so that it wasn't just taking my word for it, we wrote it into our delegate selection plan that there are funds available for congressional district chairs and county chairs to tap into so that you can do the outreach that is needed, because this is, again, how we grow our party. If we look at small spaces and we think small-minded and we only talk to the people that we already know, we're not going to grow, and that's not how we win. So we've increased our budget. We've added the money into our delegate plan so that when um, when your chair or your congressional district chair, Bobby Fuse is your congressional district chair. Yes, right? yes, yes. When he reaches out and says we need to have a training in Columbus, there's already funds there for the room rental or for the snacks or to make people or to advertise because we have to get the word out. Presidential elections are time to grow the party. Um, again, those 20-ish candidates are going to bring more people into the fold that we haven't seen before. And so we got to put our good face forward. I know sometimes it's hard when we see people that show up, and you're like, where have you been? I ain't never seen you before, but now you show up, and you want to run to be a delegate, you want to do this. Yes. But that's where we have to use the manners that we were trained with, and we have to be open and inviting to all of those new people that come into the party. But 
You don't have to do that without giving them some work to do. Mm -hmm. I'm all about, I will let my friends come over. I will let them, but when it's time to do, I'm like, you might need to load, load the dishwasher tonight. You might need to do this. Everybody has a job in my house, even the dogs. <laughs> Everybody has a job. So that's what we need to do. We need to think about how we give people roles so that they feel like they're a part of the party and not just um, show, so that you also don't feel like they just showed up just to run to be a delegate, but giving them a role within the party and helping them feel a connection and giving them a party home. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share a few things that I've been doing and I want to hear from you. So at this point, um, uh, should I, am I running this show? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to open it up for a few questions. Um, what time do we have to be out of here so I know how to so manage my time? Before eight. Oh, we have a little time then. Okay. Um, I will start here. So we've got a lot of great candidates running, obviously. Um, you know, last election was a little bit complicated. Um, how are we going to make sure, because Georgia is a swing state, but how, how are you as chair and, and all of us, how can we make sure that one of my fears is like, if certain candidates get elected, that it's going to be Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, and forget trying to turn Georgia blue, just focusing on getting back the states that we lost, when we've got so much opportunity to gain here, how do we make sure that that doesn't just become the sole focus, and that we get the attention that we deserve as a swing state? So, I, I don't know how well any of y'all know me, but I, I kind of talk a lot. <laughs> and I make sure that my position is known on a number of things. It even got me in a little trouble. I heard the yes. sheriff was here. Hey. Um, <laughs> I got arrested in November in the state house because I felt like I should be standing up for my constituents. That's right. That's right. About every vote county. So when it comes to me going to national meetings, when I go to the DNC, I have my next DNC meeting in August in San Francisco. I will be right there, and they will hear from me. I just got elected in abstention by my peers as the Southern Regional Rep to the DNC Executive Committee. So all of the Southern chairs elected me to be their representative to the DNC Executive Committee. Amen. All right. I don't, I don't um, really shy away from what I believe in and um, speaking up for the people that I'm fighting for, and I'm fighting for y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. elected me to fight for you. And you knew what you were getting, so don't get mad. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Um, so that's what I, I think. But the other piece that we need to do is we make, need to make sure that we're continuing to organize on the local level. Because I hear time and time again, people are like, well, we have all of these out-of-state people that come in and they're doing this. Mm -hmm. They only do it if we're not organized. That's right. If we're already organized and we have our stuff together. That's right. Like my grandma said, if that's you stay ready, you'll be ready. When they show up, mm -hmm. we need to be ready. We Absolutely. need to tell them what Amen. their role is and not the other way around. Amen. And I'm committed to being your voice to make sure that that happens. Thank you. A question, uh, since you're a member of the DNC, of the DNC and you might have heard of what's been going on in Alabama uh, regarding the, uh, the chairship election uh, for, the, hmm. for, the, for the chair of the DNC and how they, they gave him a 90 day notice to like have another election for the chair. They're kind of past that 90 days though, but like. Oh. <laughs> Because that would affect, especially the, uh, in the case of Senator Doug Jones and his reelection bid for this year, since we're right next to Alabama's border and everything. It's uh, I, we don't want to see more depressed people in Alabama. Like, <laughs> um, and also, I don't want to see depressed people in Alabama because all of my family lives here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, another thing too is regarding the uh, state convention. Uh, or it's probably like a t just a, a question regarding how um, we. Like, we're probably not going to have another state convention next year and everything in the presidential year, but, it's like, um, but is there any means by which we can have a state convention next year since like how most other states still have like a two-year, uh, every, every biennial state convention and everything, like, and we don't, and we're trying to like bring our state Democratic Party up to here in Florida. So I will, I'll start with the first question. Um, I actually got a phone call from Nancy Worley today, um, the current chairwoman in Alabama. I haven't had a chance to call her back, and I know that she's a night owl like me, so on my way back to Atlanta tonight, I'm going to call her back. Um, don't know what that phone call was about, but they have not had their elections yet, um, and it is past the window that the DNC gave them, but they got an extension because 
um, at the June Rules and Bylaws Committee meeting, which was just two weeks ago, um, there were some bylaws changes that needed to be made. And so the DNC is helping the state party in Alabama to revamp their bylaws so that they can come into compliance with some national standards, mm -hmm. and they're moving forward from there. Um, as far as the state convention, so we have what's called our bylaws and our charter in the Democratic Party of Georgia. And currently, we have a state, um, we are mandated to have a state convention in a gubernatorial year to choose our candidate. We passed the bylaws change maybe eight years ago um, that changed it so that the time frame was different um, of when we had our state convention. And that was after, um, because Democrats were in control for a long time, y'all. <laughs> and when we were in control, like our state convention was an opportunity for us to actually choose our candidate. And then we were in the wilderness for a little while. And so we didn't really have a state convention to choose our candidates. We just wanted some candidates that we could be proud of um, out to publicly support. And now we're kind of going through another transformative phase of the Democratic Party. And so it's up to our state committee and whatever the wish of our, the will of our state committee is to change our bylaws to reflect what we need here in the state, I'm open to that and I will help that process along the way. Um, one of the things that I think we need to do is get a more active and engaged state committee mm. so that people understand what they're getting mm. into because y'all not going to change the bylaws and then leave all the work on me. <laughs> So we gotta get, um, we have to get, so that's one of my commitments of trying to get more people engaged in the process so that we can work on some bylaws changes and we can have a more engaged electorate and party. Uh -huh. Now when Teresa met with us and uh, talked to us, and Sarah came down and talked to us, we saw where last election, 2018, where we lost a lot of counties that were blue, but they count pink now. As the chair, what are we going to do to try to re-engage those Thank counties you. and turn them blue and get back even for the county uh, counties up front of the line going to raise? Where? Where in Atlanta? Coming home. Okay. I live in Bond City, so. Democrats, 
but either didn't feel like they had a reason to show up or for some other reason. And so we're going to do pilot programs for these 2019 municipal elections so that we're ready next year. Um, last year, I worked um, as a supervisor on the Stacey Abrams for Georgia campaign, and I did a lot of work in South Georgia. Mm -hmm. The rural areas, what is the Democratic Party going to do about making sure that the rural areas are mobilized? Because a lot of times, my family's from Stewart County, Lumpkin, Richland, and so a lot of times they're there because they've been there forever, and a lot of them don't have transportation. And I wanted to know what is the Democratic Party going to do to bring our rural counties into the fold? So the, the first thing is making sure that if they have a, a municipal race this year, mm -hmm. that we're investing in those municipal races. Because we have to get people out of the mindset that election day and democracy, that democracy starts and stops on election day in November. Mm -hmm. We have to get people engaged in a year-round cycle. And that means that once you vote, even if the person that you wanted to win didn't get elected, what is, what's happening at the state capitol? Right. What are they doing that is affecting your day-to-day -day life that you're not paying attention to? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the Democratic Party, especially with me being a state senator, mm -hmm. we have a role to play in that. And so we have to make sure that we're getting the information back out to the local county committees. And if you don't have a local county committee, um, Sarah Todd, who's our vice chair for our congressional districts mm -hmm. and county affairs, she is at, she oh, is one beast. of them. Yes. Um, she is all over the state <laughs> making sure yes. that we get more county parties chartered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If we don't have county parties chartered, so right now, um, I think there was someone from the elections board here. Was there someone? Not here. Oh. Well, we have 159 counties in Georgia, mm -hmm. and we have 159 ways that election boards are <laughs> our arms wrapped around this because in some places if we don't have a, a charter county party mm -hmm. then we don't get a democratic representative to the elections board mm -hmm. so we've been just today i don't know if anybody's on the executive committee i've been going back and forth like I, we can't wait mm -hmm. we've been waiting that's right um new seats new terms started on july 1st and mm -hmm. if there are vacancies then the state law gives me as chair to appoint someone wow. and so then we can go back and we can look at how do we form a county party mm -hmm. um, moving forward but we're going to get democrats in these vacant seats on boards of elections and we're going to make sure we have the state law in place that allows me to do that and Thank so you. that's how we grow like when someone shows up in a county that we don't have a democratic party and mm -hmm. they don't feel a connection they're not coming to downtown atlanta right. the least we can do is have someone who is serving on the elections board to make sure that they know that they have a representative there. The least we can do is make sure that even if it's only five people, mm -hmm. those five people, we need to work with them to get them the resources to charter an official county party. Because when it comes time for local elections, the county parties do that. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we have someone in place to qualify candidates, and we need to make sure that we have someone in place to supervise what's happening on these boards of elections across the state. And so we're working on that right now. Um, Sarah, who is our voter protection director, she is, um, we get random phone calls because she has people calling. She's like, send me your minutes from your last yes. board of elections yes. meeting. And they're like, who is this crazy lady? I'm like, public record, send me your minutes. Um, so That's we're right. getting these minutes in, and so we're we're peeling back the layers of what's happening, and we have to do a lot of legwork to get to the point where we're able to have county parties like we have here in Muskogee County and a lot of our smaller counties, but we're committed to making that happen. Thank you. I have a comment on what you're saying about the importance of these getting involved with these small counties, because our particular which our president or chairperson is not here tonight. She worked for Stacey Abrams' campaign in America's Georgia. Yeah. And so I went and did some canvassing down there. Those people were blown away every door that I knocked on. They were like, no, wait that a minute. somebody is actually yes. They were like, yes. no, wait a minute, what? Who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> and when I told them, I had several people cry on the doorstep, literally cry to me because it, it makes me cry to talk to you about it. But cried to me because they were so happy that, yes. you know, I was there and that I cared and had reached out to them. So I just want to say thank you for what you said about, you know, it's so important. Direct for voter contact makes all yes. the oh, I saw People it. will see a TV Teach. ad and, yes. or they won't because I don't watch anything in real time. I report every day <laughs> or I watch it on demand and there are no commercials. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure, are you with the TV station? Because I'm just like... 
boo booing all over yeah. your TV ads. But it's okay. Direct voter contact is the way we win elections. You know? <laughs> but um, so, but direct voter contact is how we win elections, and we that's why we are going door to door, and that's why we have our. Um, organizing core fellows on the ground and that's why we have the commit to vote cards and that's why we're making sure that we're out in communities um, around the yep. year not just around election time because we don't have enough time to get to everybody that's just right. at election time that's right. and then it's not authentic and I want people to know that the values that they care about in their everyday life I want them to see those values in the Democratic Party so then the next time you knock on that door maybe they're not home because they're out knocking on doors too mm -hmm. we gotta grow our party that's right that's yes. right. I just uh, want to thank you guys for keeping your amazing voter protection de uh, director on staff here around. I didn't know that that was, that was happening. She was great. Um, she I is. Abrams She's night. on vacation this week. But. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let her get a break. I'll work in the place. I worked for Stacey Abrams last night, who was her finance director. Um, right. In this cycle, I'm Teresa Thomas' finance director. And the thing is, I'm talking to some of the same uh, supporters. Um, a lot of folks around the country who are asking me the question about, well, okay, but if I come in this time, is the election going to be safe? Is it going to be safe? <laughs> we were just talking about that today, about all the things that are happening right now that you guys are being very, very visible about, which is very helpful to us, and I think to all of the candidates and campaigns that are going to be running, um, that we are able to tell people that there is work that's going on, that there is a team that's in place, that was in place and saw and was on the ground, not just... Um, before the 2018 election, but also after the election, when people were, were protesting at the state house, and mm -hmm. continuing to see that we're building on all the information we have. So thank you for that investment, because I think that is so important, not just for us as campaigns, but also just for democracy and for mm -hmm. um, For the, the excitement that people have when they get engaged um, in this process and want to see it through, but also feel like their vote is counting. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. And one more question? How does the state go about selecting candidates for some of these house districts that <laughs> tend to be uncontested? Selecting? <laughs> well, I think we don't, we don't select candidates. We have Adrian White, who's our vice chair for candidate recruitment. Um, we are what we we committed to do is host trainings throughout the state. Um, we've had three so far since um, we came on board um, the last weekend of January. We've had three trainings for candidates. And what we're doing is we are literally opening opening up the doors to make sure we have a map for our targeted district because we are laser focused on taking back the house the house because 2020 is real redistricting is real um, we have to make sure that Absolutely. people are counted in the census and that yes. we um, get the we get control of one chamber um, and I serve in the Senate and it pains me to say that. We're probably not going to have the majority Democrats in the Senate in 2020. Mm -hmm. But I see a very clear pathway to make that happen in the House. Mm -hmm. And so we're laser focused on that because once we, if we, if Democrats are in control of the House, then that means that we are going to have both parties talking to, together to redraw these district lines. And that's what we need to make sure that people are really represented. It. So um, those key districts that we know we need to win, we are um, making sure that candidates that are showing up, that we give them a very realistic idea of what it takes to run for office and why this, why you have to make sure that you bring your family into it because it's a family affair and why you make sure that you are really being true to your authentic self because we live in a world where everything that's done in the dark will come to the light. Amen. So make sure that you're being very authentic um, in your candidacy. And we are opening up the doors. We have more people that have signed up. We had 208 people that had signed up to run for office um, at the end of the legislative session wow. just based on all of the shenanigans that you saw happen during wow. 40-day legislative sessions. Wow. So we're making sure that um, we're opening up the process so that people understand what it takes to run for office, giving them the tools to succeed, and we are not, um, we're not selecting candidates for any of the seats. Y'all, I don't know why. My husband just raised his hand. <laughs> 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 Some we haven't had. Are any of these key districts in this area? Yeah. Leslie, I feel like you have something you want to share with the group. He's in now.
redistricting committee to deal with um, redistricting and it was about I was the, the lead signature um, as the sponsor of the legislation and my colleague who is the chair of the redistricting committee who's a Republican he was the second signer on the bill and I got the study committee through the rules committee process and then when it's time to appoint the study committees I was told by our leadership on the opposite party that um, we're never gonna let this pass wait until you're in charge and then you can do it. Wow. And it's one thing that you shouldn't tell me. <laughs> it's, yeah, tell me what I can't do. And so I'm just waiting, and I'm going to show him when I'm in charge, because we will be in charge, and Democrats are going to win, and we're going to take over the state. <laughs> so we, um, her, it was a resolution that she passed, and it was a study committee that, um, that I passed, but as long as, um, as long as Republican leadership doesn't feel like, um, that they feel like it benefits them to gerrymander our districts, especially with the recent Supreme Court decision, yes. um, they're gonna continue to do it. And so that's why the best way to combat that is more people showing up in 2020 and y'all helping me right. to get to 91 in the Georgia House of Representatives because then we have a say in this process. We need 91 seats. Right now we have 75. 91 gets us a majority, so that's 16 seats. And we have 22 seats that we are targeting across the state. So I see a pathway to get there. I don't shy down, shy away from something that seems like a tall order. Um, if I did that, then I wouldn't be standing here today Amen. because people told me that it was not my time to run and other people should step up and run. And I told them I could show them better than I, than I could tell them. Amen. And I'm going to do the same thing with my colleagues in the House and the Senate. Now, now. <laughs> Love it. When I first came to Georgia back in 2003, Columbus had a really decent newspaper. <laughs> and, you know, you, they had a, a bureau uh, up in Atlanta, and you could find out what was going on up there. Mm -hmm. Now, since that time, our local newspaper has become pretty scrawny and pretty pitiful <laughs> and they don't even have the reporters to cover the news that's happening here in town mm -hmm. let alone Atlanta, Tell it, let girl. alone what's going on in Tell it, and the tv stations aren't much better because you get the feeling that they're far more interested in getting the ad money than in telling the public what's Tell actually it. happening and so if there is if a major real of great importance Wow. We kind of tend to hear about it after, after it's been the voted on rather yep. than while the discussion is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you you know, the ignorance hmm. of the public is a real problem. People, democracy dies in darkness. Yes, dark yes, right. yes ma'am. Is there anything the Democratic Party can do to help the public uh, get information you know, while it's still useful to them, while there's time to call your representative, whoever he or she may be, and say, oh, that's a great bill, or are you nuts? You know, whatever is appropriate. Don't need to talk about the dearth of information available to the public is really, really a problem. Mm. So I, um, I agree that we need to be able to get more information out. One of the things that we do every Friday, I don't know, um, shameless plug if you've signed up for it but yeah. um my newsletter i send out a newsletter every, every week during the week. legislative session where's maria poor maria she's like nakima this formatting is killing me but every week of the legislative session um i send out a <laughs> newsletter of what ha what happened what's coming up what we need to hear your voice on so that you um so that people are kept up to speed and it's not just for people that live in my senate district because the things that i vote on in um, atlanta it affects the entire state not just my district so if you want to sign up, you can go to nakimawilliams.com and sign up for my newsletter. Outside of session, we send that out once a month, not mm -hmm. once a week, because it would be a lot. 
but um, that is something that, that I do, and I know a lot of other members do that as well. The other thing is um, for people who want to watch TV and not want to read my newsletters, um, Political Rewind, how many of you um, have ever watched that? Yes. <laughs> Two o'clock. Okay. Two o'clock, yep. I, well, we listened to it on the way down today because um, I was working earlier, and so in the car on the way down, we listened to Political Rewind. But Political Rewind is um, public radio, mm -hmm. which is kind of come public TV now because mm -hmm. on Fridays they right. um, film it and they air it again on Sundays. Yep. And so that's also a good way of keeping up with what, what's happening at the Capitol because during legislative session, they focus on the issues of the day. And right now we have, they always try to have a balanced panel of Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. and people that are unaffiliated. Yep. And so um, we are, we try to make sure that we get information that Democrats care about to the Democratic panelists before they go on so that they understand um, what, like, what our electorate is thinking and feeling. And so that's a good way to keep up to date of what's going on um, across the state. Dominic. Huh? 10 by 10, the... Oh, 10 by 10. Yeah. Um, so also, before I get out of bed every morning, there is a, um, I don't know how to sign up for this. <laughs> so it's called Georgia 10 by 10. And so before 10 a.m. every day, there is an email that's in your inbox with the top 10 news stories, mm -hmm. um, political news stories of the day in Georgia. So it's 10 news stories by 10 o'clock every day. And Dominic has taken on the task of making sure that everybody in Muskogee County knows how to sign up. Oh, Maria. Oh, what is this, Maria? And you can sign up for updates from the Democratic Party if you just put your email for it. <laughs> yes. Um, obviously, one of the things they kept saying from the down was the fact that as opposed to the president and everything, we also had a misfortune of a hurricane coming through and going right through San Francisco this week. Um, you know, unfortunately, due to climate change, we have more storms, bigger storms. And what is, what can the Democratic Party do to make sure that obviously, if your house, you know, my family was down there and affected by that, you've got a tree through your window, you've got to think about that. But what can the Democratic Party do to make to have like I don't know something for when these sorts of things happen? It's going to happen. Keep happening. What can the Democratic Party do to basically have an emergency sort of to make sure that voters that you know they can still vote because that thing happened what like, three weeks before the election or right Michael the early, it was, Yeah. And so what can we do? Um. So one of the things. So I we have to have multiple tools in our toolbox. <laughs> We have to do the organizing to get people out and be proactive and get people to the polls. We also have to make sure that um, that one of the tools in our toolbox is litigation. And when things like a storm happen and people have been impacted and had to leave home and weren't there, then that's where we it is we step in and we are stepping up to the plate to make sure that we go to the courts to say that we need expanded voting or we need um, these absentee ballots to be accepted at a later date or people who receive, what can we do to make sure that people still have access? So that is um, definitely on a case-by-case -case, um, basis because it depends on the impact and it depends on the time frame and when the storm occurs. But I think litigation is one of the tools that we have to always remember that we have in our toolbox. Mm -hmm. Okay, Harry. Okay, Harry, this is your second question. Because <laughs> 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 of two, two. <laughs> Um, why is a state convention held in August instead of the spring before the primary? Um, has the Democratic Party thought that the, the DPG thought about a lawsuit or run through the judicial process in order to fight a lot of the, uh, the, of the, of the districts uh, for state and for state house, state senate? Um, and, and why they're, uh, they're, they're laid out so like favoring more land and more people, uh, especially in the area? And the list of state committee members be published on I'll go in reverse. The list of state committee members will be published on the website as soon as the county parties get them to it. So um, it's, I don't go to the counties and run their state committee elections. That is done on the local level by each county. And so our list is only as good as the information that we receive back from the counties. I see Justin nodding his head because he is going through this like around the clock. Like, y'all send me your certification paperwork. Send me your minutes from your meeting because the other thing is it can't just be um, Nakima, Leslie, and Carter were elected to state committee seats. It has to be where are your minutes from your meeting and 
and where are the details to back this up? Because you would be surprised in some counties we hear that this person is elected and they're like, no, I was elected. But if we have minutes and we can back that up, then we can make that happen. So if you want to volunteer on the team that is calling to get this information in, I just was like, sign up right here. Because we need all the help that we can get. But yeah, our, our information is only as good as what you put into it. So um, as soon as counties get me information, we can get the student information updated. Thank you. Um, number two, why the state convention in August instead of in whatever dates? Um, I was elected on January 26th. There's a lot of history of this party, but I don't know what I'm <laughs> So what I do know okay. is that our bylaws mandate when our state um, convention is, and if that is something that the state committee is open to changing, I'm open to that as well. But I don't know, um, I don't know all of the details around that, and I'm not going to pretend to because I never pretend to know things that I don't. <laughs> and number three, there was another question. Um, has the Democratic DPG brought up when it was being forced in light yeah. of the uh, of the Supreme Court uh, in DC saying um, like uh, we're ruling the federal government out, so you go to um, rule it out at the state level, and so like a lot of the okay, to go through the state courts if you can't get this done my through the state process. Um, although it's probably going to be harder here. Okay, the state courts. I got you. Right, state so um, the the issue there is we next year. So elections, primaries have, um, will be in May of next year, and then the general election is in November of 2020. So we're already in the 2020 election cycle, and with we going through the court system takes time, and then especially drawing new maps. So are you? So I get. I think I'm hearing you right. Like going through the courts to get new maps for 2020. Yes. Yeah, so awesome. because we're drawing new lines. Right. Anyway, so this is our last election cycle um, in these seats, and then they're all going to change um, after the 2020 election. So we're only going to run on these maps for um, just next well, year. And so, no, there, and you know, the Supreme Court decision happened like the right a week ago. So, yeah. a point so no, there has not been any movement on that. Right. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, thank y'all. So, I heard praise the Lord. Thank y'all so much for being here. Uh, Miss Laura, the, the chair. Okay, your chairwoman. She says, can you ask her, Tonza, any advice for new county leadership as far as priorities and focus? She's been on the whole time. Oh, thank you so much for <laughs> listening in. I hate that you weren't here to be with us tonight, um, but we all have lives outside of this. And for new leadership, priorities and focus, um, Muskogee County is an already chartered county, so thank you for getting all of your paperwork in and all of your information, because that is the number one priority. And number two, um, I am sure that you are on the monthly um, calls with all state party chairs and congressional district chairs, so that information, um, Sarah Todd gets out timely information every month, and we are just looking forward to growing the Muskogee County Democratic Party so that we can win up and down the ballot. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. For coming well, all right, Laura. We love you. Tammy, Toya, and Tom love you. Good night. It was good. It was great.